I'm going to work through this page because it is a little more detailed um, than some of the other lessons. So I'm going to work through it, and you can check your work as we go. Um, I do know that the camera's being a little bit laggy, so if I'm talking about something and my hand hasn't gotten there yet, um, just try to be patient with me. All right, number one, or sorry, number two. Ella has, I'm going to cover up the number. Ella has more buttons than Julio. Julio has some buttons. How many buttons does Ella have? So Ella has more. This bar must be Ella's. Julio has got to have this one then. All right. Julio's got 49. I know that's not the first thing in the problem, but that's helpful. We know exactly how many Julio has. Julio's got 49 buttons. I'm going to write that so we remember what we're talking about. Okay. Um, Ella has 34 more than Julio. So this space over here is showing us how many more Julio would need to be the same as Ella. So if he had 34 more, he and Ella would be the same. So we need to put 49 and 34 together and find, oh, not 39, and find what that sum is. Okay, so I'm going to do it with base 10 blocks, 49, and I'm not going to count them as I do them because I know it's not matching what my hand does. And then 34, okay, I'm going to count those ones, and I'm, when I get to 10, I'm going to circle them. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to circle a group of ten and I'm going to move it over here to the tens place and I'm going to put an R over this so I know that I've regrouped those. Then I've got three left in the ones place. Tens, I've got four here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it seems to me that Ella has 83 buttons. All right, number three. Erase my marks from our lesson. Some students, I'm just covering up the numbers, some students are on the bus. Then some students get off the bus. Next, some students get on the bus. How many students are on the bus now? All right, let's go back and do it with, so we can visualize just the action if we're not worried about those numbers. We're starting out with 20 students. I'll put that here. 20 students are on the bus. Then 10 students get off the bus. Well, that doesn't need to go here then. If students are getting off, I'm going to skip the boxes. To be honest, I think they're a bit confusing here. 20 students are on the bus. 10 students get off the bus. That's subtraction. Okay. It doesn't ask us how many we have right now, but let's go ahead and figure it out. If we had 20 kids on the bus, 10 of them got off, that means we have 10 students still on the bus. Next, 15 students get on the bus. So we're starting with our 10, because that's what's on the bus now. We've got 15. Are we going to add them or subtract them? We're going to add them, because they're getting on the bus. 10 plus 15 equals 25. If you wanted to draw a picture of the bus, y'all, with these numbers, you could have done that. That's fine. We could put 20 students on the bus. I'm going to try to draw them as neatly as I can. It would have been smart for me to do them in 10 frames. I hear you saying that. I'm going to have to make my bus a little bigger. I've got 15. All right. Here's our bus at the beginning. It has 20 kids on it. Then 10 of them get off. I'm going to mark through 10 of them. Okay. 
Okay, then you don't have to know any math facts. You can just count how many are left. Ten. And I got ten right here. Next, fifteen students get on the bus. I'm going to have to draw these students a little bit smaller. These might be kindergartners. Okay, now how many students are on the bus? So we have our 10 that we started with, and then we can count the smaller dots and see how many there are all together. And that will take you to 25 students. Right. Number four, Wendy has more crayons than Oscar. That's why we went and filled in Wendy's name here, because she's got the big bar. This is Oscar's, and then this is what would make them the same. Oscar has 54 crayons. How many crayons does Wendy have? So we need to add these two together to get how many Wendy had. Okay, 54 plus 14. I'm going to do expanded form for this one. If you wanted to use base 10 blocks, do it please. Whatever one works best for you. So 60 plus 8. 68 crayons. All right. Let's work through the ones on the back. Let's deal with all these figs. Do you like figs? I wonder if you've ever had them. They're very, I've, I've only had them in a jar and they're very sweet. Mariah has 17 figs. Well, that's easy. We know, so we know Mariah. Kendra has more figs than Mariah. She has 20 more. So if we're figuring out how many figs Kendra has, we know that she has 20 more than Mariah. So whatever Mariah has, plus 20. I wonder why we have two blanks. That's kind of weird. Um, so 17 plus 20. I can actually do that with mental math because I know 17 is 10 plus 7. 20 plus 10 is 30. 30 plus 7 is 37. Toby has 33 more than Kendra. Well, if Kendra's got 37, Toby has 33 more. Let's see, I think I'm gonna have to put it over here. Okay. I can count my ones. I've got seven over here, and then one, two, three. Oh, the document camera's not lagging anymore. I am going to circle a group of ten, and it's going to be a weird circle because I didn't have a lot of room and I didn't get any scratch paper. I'm going to regroup them into the tens place. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and we don't have any ones left over. So Toby's got 70 figs. What do you think he's going to do with all his figs? You think they're going to eat them, or you think they're going to throw them at each other? I don't know. All right, number six. Let me, uh, I should have erased these before I started. All right. Number uh, six says eight girls and some boys are in a pool. Draw our swimming pool. And we know we've got eight girls, so I'm going to put eight G's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In all, 17 children are in the pool. So our equation is eight plus something equals 17. And I hope that you remember from fact families that we can rearrange this and use the equation 17 minus 8 and figure out what that is. We can also keep adding boys until we get to 17. So we're at 8. So let's do B for boy. That's 9, 10, 11, 12. So now right now there's 12 kids in the pool. 13, 14, 15, 
16, 17 kids in the pool. Let's see how many boys we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine boys in the pool. Then some more boys jump in the pool. Now there are 13. So if we have nine and we get some more boys and we end up with 13, let's see how many more we need. So we're not gonna count the girls right now. We're only counting boys. So we have nine. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use lowercase b's for these new boys. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So now we have 13 boys in the pool. How many more boys did we get? Four. You could also use the equation 13 minus nine equals four. Okay, this equation matches the story though. We had nine, we got some more that we don't know and ended up with 13. Four more boys jumped in the pool. Number seven, the coach, soccer coach has 18 shirts. She gives nine of the shirts to some of her players. Then she gets 11 more shirts. How many shirts does the coach have left? Well, let's break it down into steps. She has 18 shirts. She gives nine of the shirts to her players. Giving, that means you're getting rid of some of them. So we're gonna, that's gonna be a subtraction problem. What is 18 minus nine? Do we know our doubles facts? 18 minus nine equals nine. All right, next, she gets 11 more shirts. So we're gonna start with this number and she gets 11 more. Now, how many does she have? Nine plus 11 equals 20. So you should have gotten 20 for number seven. The coach has 20 shirts left. All right, send me your questions or your concerns or your comments. Um, I'd love to hear them. Bye guys.